Hi, this is Patty from Urban Spools coming to you live. Our guest tonight is Leo Ransom. Say hi, Leo. Hello. So, Leo, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started quilting. Um, actually, I learned to sew and piece when I was in high school. And I didn't do anything with it until about 1998 when I was needing to make a project or the family auction, and I decided to make a memory quilt. So that was when I took up quilting again, and I've been doing it ever since. Did Have you ever taken any formal classes? Are you self-taught? I'm mostly self-taught. Um, I really didn't take any classes until the last few years. Can you describe what room you're in, and can you start, can you explain what's behind you? Okay. I am actually in my sewing room, which is my quilt studio. And the pieces that are hanging behind me, um, I did not want to leave a blank design wall behind me. So I filled it in with some pieces that I've either completed or been working on. And I've also got some of my favorites set to the side for later. Good. But uh, the piece in the corner here, that's Vivian DiCarlo. I did that piece. Uh, I was asked to do something to add into the children's exhibit for Halloween. So I did this piece to put in there. The George Takai is a reject piece from um, an exhibit called uh, Our Story. And my other two pieces got in, but he did. The Nelson Mandela was for a quilt show in Sulphur Springs. And I learned a lot from this show because I ended up in third place on this quilt because there was like a quarter of an inch where there was a spot that I didn't pack the binding down tight enough. Oh my gosh. So I got kicked out of first place because of that. Since then, he's won quite a few awards. Next, I have Amy Winehouse. Um, Richard Larson it quilts most of my competition pieces, and I went and had a play date with him. And... Quilting with this man is very intimidating because he is a national award winner. But he taught me a lot about long arm and my quilting technique. This piece right here is actually uh, a sample from my silhouette class. And I was practicing quilting on a long arm so that I could decide which one to choose. I just need to put a binding on it. Uh, the Lucille Ball here. I did three of them. Uh, I actually sold one of them. And I just did it as a color experiment. Mm. Uh, the Chadwick Bozeman right here. Uh, this is one of my latest pieces. It's not quilted yet. But when I found out that he passed away and his story as far as the cancer and still filming, I decided that I wanted to pay tribute to him. Um, this one right here is not even complete. But... I was playing with large print fabric, so it was kind of an experiment as well. And like in his beard and uh, the hair, all of the dark spots, this is a leaf pattern. It's a number of different types of leaves. But I wanted to see how well it would blend without overtaking the portrait itself. It worked out really well. I just need to finish doing some uh, final details like in the eyes and in the, the robe itself. Um, Ernie Chaplin up here is a confetti collage technique wow. and he's like the second one that I did. The first one is an Oprah, which is traveling right now. And anyways, um, I had fun with this one, bringing Charlie to life. So the name of it is Charlie Chaplin revisited. <laughs> this one over here is one of two pieces. It's called reflections. And in this one, this is the first time that I played on a long arm as far as quilting a piece for a competition. And this one right here is my grandfather who was in the Navy. Wow. And I've decided to change the background on it. So I'm glad that I have not adhered him to the background. I want to make an actual flag, but he was in the Navy back in the 40s. So that's my tribute to him. But wow. that's what all of these pieces are back here. Those are incredible. Um, well, thank you. I appreciate it. What is your favorite technique to use? You mentioned the confetti, and then do you do a layering technique? Um, I do silhouette layering and uh, confetti. And I really think that the confetti is probably my 
favorite because I can take a layered or a silhouette piece and create it through confetti. That's incredible. So where do you get your inspiration besides your grandfather being in the Navy and stuff? How do you choose? I get my, I get my inspiration from a number of places. Like with the Chadwick, I mean, it was newsworthy. Sure. And I, I just admired the uh, man for everything he went through in the latter part of his life. Um, it just really depends on what's going on at the moment. Um, like I've got some patterns made where I'm going to make kind of a memorial quilt of a lot of the African -Amer American uh, deaths. I hate to say killings or murders, right. but um, the deaths that have happened in the last few years. So there's going to be a lot of familiar faces on that quilt. Um, and I've been doing black history blurbs for right. the entire month. And now I've decided that I want to do a black history quilt. And I want to take all of these people that I have been showing every day and create a quilt and put it in chronological order. Very nice. So it really depends on what's going on as to where I get my inspiration from. So um, do you have other designers that inspire you? That you follow? Yes, the the initial designer that inspired me was, uh, and I went completely brain dead, <laughs> and he would kill me. <laughs> It'll come back around. Uh, okay, but another that inspires me is Danny Amazonas, and I'm a little heartbroken because I was supposed to have gone to a workshop last year with Danny, and COVID happened. Yes, well, they rescheduled for this year, and. I ended up backing out because of uh, the wedding, but it ended up getting canceled altogether. Oh. So once again, I still haven't taken a class from him. Okay. Do you but Those are my, my two main inspirations. So someone's asking a question. Hey, Leo. Okay. Hey, Leo. How much experience do you need to attempt a project like this? Actually, um, I teach classes all over the place, and I look forward to teaching at urban schools. But um, I like for everyone to start out with the silhouette technique so that they can see how much cutting is involved before they attempt, like, the, the layering technique. Because with that one, you're dealing with anywhere from three to seven layers of fabric, depending on how experienced you become. So I always suggest the silhouette first and then the layering. So how much fabric, when you say seven layers, how much fabric would be? When I teach the classes, I always ask the students to bring uh, fat quarters. And I want them to bring a, a variation of fabrics from light to dark that complement each other. They can even go monochromatic and just go seven different shades of the same color. Um, but I ask them to bring like anywhere from 12 to 15 pieces if their pieces is that extensive with seven layers. Most of the time in the classes, I try to keep them to four. Right. And I still ask them to bring like seven or eight. And uh, basically, they start with the light, they end with the dark, and I have them choose anything in between. Very nice. So we have another question for you. Yes. Hey, Leo, what machine do you use? Actually, um, I bought a mid-arm to do my quilting on, and I actually do most of my piecing on it now. And uh, some of the, the finer quilting, um, it's actually a brother. I can't remember the model number, but it's a mid-arm. And um, I bought it after buying a Juki, spending almost $1,600 on it. And I have an antique sewing machine collection, and one fell off the wall and hit that Juki. Well, it was going to cost me $800 to get that Juki fixed. And I found that brother for $600. It's manual. If I had found it to begin with, I would have bought two of those. And I'm, I'm in heaven with this machine because it lets me do what I want to do. And I don't have to rely on a computer. Are you any members of um, any guilds? Yes, um, I'm members of the Fort Worth Modern Guild and the uh, McKinney Modern uh, Quilters Guild. Okay. And do you live? In McKinney, I live in Sherman. I live in Sherman, Texas, with it, which is about an hour north north of uh, Dallas. Very nice. 
And do you have a day job? Yes, I work for Hobby Lobby here in Sherman. Uh, I've been there uh, eight years, getting ready to approach my ninth Christmas with them. Uh, nice. I graduated college five years ago, and I decided to stay with Hobby Lobby because I actually make a decent wage there. Very nice. Very nice. Maybe we should take a road trip and come see you when you're working at Hobby Lobby. I would love it. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? No. no. Um, Gone through my... Is there anything? Show us. Are you ready to show us your surprise that you sure. have back? I was telling you that the confetti quilting is one of my favorites. Yes, it looks. I started. Excuse me. <coughs> Trying not to do that. <laughs> I started. I started this piece in a Facebook live when I was doing an artist walk <coughs> at Home Alamode in Dennis. Oh, and yeah. basically what I did was yeah. I drew out the silhouette onto the fabric <laughs> and then I filled everything in wow. with different shades of black and gray fabrics. Wow, that's incredible. And at the very end, I decided I found some fabric at Hobby Lobby and it has all the different names for Jesus. And I decided to add those in there as well to give it a little bit more interest. It's beautiful. Wow. So, that is gorgeous. Have you entered that in a show? No, I have not. I mean, this was a piece that I had made a small version for my pastor. And I decided that I liked it so much that I wanted to make one for myself. Beautiful. And I've had a number of people trying to buy that one. I'm bad. not quite ready to let go of it. <laughs> this is the one that I became known for. Yeah. This is the first major quilt show that I won was the Dallas Quilt Show with this particular quilt. And Richard quilted this quilt for me. And I'm going to come in so that you can see, but he quilted uh, music notes into this quilt. It is amazing the job that he did. It's more beautiful in person than just on the screen right now. Oh, but my this gosh. Is, this is the backside. That is beautiful. Wow. That is incredible. It's not just beautiful, it's incredible. Do you have that hanging so, in your home? Um, actually, it just got back from the East Coast. Oh, okay. It, cool. it was traveling. traveling. At one point, I had 11 quilts that were traveling. Wow. Amazing. This piece, I was, I was trying to basically save credit after doing the John Lennon, and this is what I came up with. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. And once again, Richard quilted this one for me. And I love it because when you see it in person, it looks like wool. Right. And it's actually a combination of the print on the fabric and the quilting that he applied to it. But this one was traveling with the John Lennon. Um, they were traveling with Sewing Expo. I entered them through the Fort Worth Modern Guild. Yes. And they both won, between the two of them, they won like five or six awards. Wow. And they asked me if they could travel in a show called The Best of North Texas. So I let them leave home for a little while, and I was so nervous while they were gone. I bet. Ask him if that one's layering. Is that this so one was wet? traveling, and he just came home. Wow. Wow. And... This is Alfred Nobel. Oh, okay. And I actually quilted this one myself. Wow. But um, he didn't get to do as much traveling as I wanted him to do. <laughs> COVID kind of messed up things again. Oh. So when he came home, I was happy once again because one of my kids had come home. Is that the really, layering what, technique? Is that silhouette? I'm sorry? Is that silhouette or layering? Or both? No, that one's layering. Okay. Wow. Actually, uh, other than the crown of thorns, uh, everything that I've shown you has been layering. Mm. Okay. This one is layering. And this one, I love the quilt, but I'm disappointed because the only people that have actually seen it in person are the people that were at the uh, awards that night before the show. And it won the theme category of a 
2020 Double Vision is a Dallas book show. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. But this is my cousin's hus husband, and he dresses kind of like a hipster. So that's why I named it Double the Hipster. <laughs> but with this one, I created two portraits, okay. uh, monochromatic portraits, one in blues and one in blacks and grays. And then I spliced them back together. That's incredible. And Richard quilted this one. Wow. That's incredible. But, that, yeah. Thank you. That's but this one hasn't got to do as many shows or travel the way that the others have. So that's the reason why I'm disappointed for that particular quilt. Mm -hmm. And then I have to show the one that um, you guys posted on your Facebook page. This is my Jimmy the Junk Hendrix. Yes. And this was wow. love, passion, and Sparkles. just wanting to do something <laughs> really different. And what I did was after creating him, I added a bunch of bling and garbage to it. I see uh, that. And it's it's hiding in the fabric it, itself. I mean, you can see the zipper dancing. Oh, right now there. I see it. Yeah, you can see the spark but, the sparkles. Oh, yes. that is, yeah, that's so, more than a well, Those are my favorite ones. You have blown me away. So I think we have another what question. question. What did you study in college? Actually, I got a degree in uh, business administration with a minor in accounting. <laughs> and could you please explain layering technique for us versus silhouette okay uh, with layering technique here we'll do Chadwick okay with the layering technique when you look at it you'll see all of the different layers that are in there and I started with the white and then I went to the next color and I kept working my way out to dark. This particular one has four different colors in it. But I just love the way that they play well together and they create an awesome image. Oh, it is. It's, so do you have a picture that you're going from when you did that? Yes, uh, that's what I do. And most of the things I try to get off of uh, wikimedia.org because most of them are old enough or they've been shared by photographers that you can use them without uh, worrying about copyright infringement. Oh, okay. Some of the things that I do, they're for my collection and I don't ever plan on selling them. So as long as no one has a problem with me doing that, I do try to ask for permission, but sometimes I don't get a response. So I'll try and move to something else. But if something weighs really heavy on my heart, I'll go ahead and make it, but I don't enter it. Mm -hmm. um, I might take it with me on a on the road to speak about, but that's as far as it goes. Well, it's incredible. Thank you. So you said you did commission work, so people could send you photos? Yes. Of a loved um, one, or, and you would do that? Yes. Uh, one of the last ones that I did was a graduation gift. And I took six different pictures of this kid. And I prefer if they're professional pictures or pictures that I've taken. Mm -hmm. But this she took with her cell phone. And only one of them I was able to layer. The rest of them I had to do them in silhouette form because I just couldn't get the, the detail that I needed because they were too blurry. So I did that when it was like a 16 by 20 and it just totally floored uh, the kid when she gave it to him as his graduation gift. I'm sure. Wow. But I've done uh, a weenie dog for a lady, uh, oh. one of my church members. <laughs> and um, she loved this dog and had this dog for a while. And when it passed away, she asked me if I would replicate that dog for her. So I've, I've probably done close to a dozen commissions, but it's not something that I do all the time. We have several people asking about you teaching Leo. So I wanted to share um, that Leo is teaching here at Urban Schools on April 10th. He's teaching both an in-person class and a virtual class. So be sure everyone watching go to urbanspools.com to sign up for his class 
with us if you are interested. The space is going to be very limited, so you'll really need to get in there on that. Um, Tabitha Williams says, very nice. Carol Pfeiffer says, I love your work, Leo. Very Thank nice. you. How can you not love his work? Right? It's amazing. You, <laughs> you can just are stare artist. at it for hours. Thanks. Um, let's see. We've got lots of people saying hello and that they're watching. Everyone is just full of compliments for you, Leo. Yay. Well, thank you. Full. I feel bad because I forgot to post this earlier in the week. And I posted it roughly about an hour before we were to go live <laughs> well that's okay so, you know what we're recording it and i think we're going to post it for people to come back to if you don't mind I appreciate that. yes yeah and then we're also going to offer a kit um for the layering technique we have lots of people asking the difference between your layering and silhouette technique okay the silhouette the silhouette is actually just two fabrics it's a light and a dark and you want something that is contrasting um, and or complementary so that it will project your image. So it's something that's easy and fast. And let's see. Okay, like the dog. This is a silhouette. And it's just two fabrics of black and a paint. And then with the layered, uh, like with the Chadwick Bozeman, there's four different fabrics. So you're starting with the light adding the, the next darker shade and then an even darker shade all the way down to your darkest shade. And that makes sense. so that's the difference between the silhouette and the layering is that the silhouette is two fabrics and the layering is multiple layers mm. of fabric. That's great. That um, just for everyone uh, listening and watching the silhouette technique is what Leo has recommended. We start with, and that's what we're going to have on April 10th at urban schools. This is another example of the layer. And I'm a grunge hound, so this yeah. entire piece is made out of grunge. out of motor grunge. Nice. Very nice. Oh. It's beautiful. Wow. Thank you. You are a true artist. It's Thanks. Incredible. I always have at least 13 projects or more going at any given time. Wow. Well, thank you for being with us tonight. Is there anything else I haven't asked or that you want to share? Nothing that I can really think of. Once again, I want to give Urban Schools a plug for inviting me to do this. And I look forward to teaching at your shop on April 10th. And hopefully I will get to teach with you a little bit more. I know. We're all so excited to see you and see you virtually on both classes. So. Thank you again for spending time with us. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>